So right, five point six. Travel camping by law adoption. Yeah, Jane Pabs, good afternoon, Jane. How are you? Worshipping councillors. Right. Okay, I will take this report as read and I'm happy to take any questions. Okay. Any questions of Jane? So this is an act of bylaw. So what is the risks of enacting this bylaw today or what are the, uh, we know what the pros are, what's the cons? Um, <laughs> Nigel? <laughs> <Not looking. laughs> That's right, well, questions of councillors first, perhaps. Well, maybe, maybe I can help a little bit in that. Um, that you'll be aware that there are some, some risks in terms of the bylaw. Um, the legislation, um, the Freedom Camping Act, um, requires council to have um, suitable evidence before it can um, can make a bylaw um, to restrict freedom camping. Um, you've also heard um, from submitters come through the chamber through this process who have um, indicated a concern with freedom camping in parts of the district. Um, so the proposal that you've that you've come to, or the proposed bylaw that you've come to, was seen as a um, as a elegant way of meeting both of those demands. Um, there are still some questions on both in both of those counts in terms of whether or not you're meeting community needs and whether or not you're meeting the um, strict interpretation of the evidence that's required in terms of the Act. So, so it's a balance for you now. Um, you have several options here today. You could either make the bylaw or you could not make the bylaw. Um, I guess complicating the fact this fact is that you do have um, the government, we're aware, releasing a um, discussion document on freedom of camping at some point. Um, that's been delayed, as I understand it, due to the, primarily due to the election. Um, so we don't know what that's going to provide for yet. Um, so that, that's a, a further complicating factor um, into, the, into the mix. Um, that's probably about as far as I can go. Okay, Councillor Williamson. I've obviously grew up in the community having the first discussions around about like, um, particularly uh, protecting like the fort, like the lakefront, and actually the, the hundred metre prohibition. To me, that uh, as, and Mr. Moore down the back of that conversation, he's obviously um, interested as well as, as a member of the NZMCA and as a as a freedom camper and with moving around the country with regard, for example, that. At Three Mile Bay, where Mr. Mulway lives, is, for, is, is less than 100 metres, so you're going to be prohibiting vehicles parking outside houses. It, it gets a bit more involved, you know, with with regard to, and it's not actually affecting access or environment or health or safety, which is the only reason under the Freedom Camping Act you can put, you can have some sort of legislate uh, against or have a policy, you know outside those er those areas, so I'm just a bit concerned whether we should be really looking at that 100 metre, whether it's 50, whether it's relevant, whether it's, I mean, I, I'm all for protecting you know, the lake, lake shore, you know, keeping vehicles and freedom campers away from the lake front, but whether it's a 50 or 100 metres, whether it's actually workable. <coughs> okay. Any other question here, Councillor Park? Um, yes, I sort of tend to agree with Councillor Williamson in regards to this, I sort of, the, um, before with Bike Topal gave us a presentation, you know, about people who put their seven and a half thousand dollar e-bikes on the back of a camper van and come and stay for three days and all this sort of thing. They're not the people that this draft bylaw is intended for. It's the slidey vans, it's the people who put their washing out over the fence along the lakefront and the people that defecate and leave their rubbish everywhere. And just, um, and with the sort of legality challenges and with the risks that have been identified, I'm, I'm not comfortable with this bylaw, but my heart thinks this is great and for our communities this is what they want and we need to do, but my head tells me from a governance perspective that I, I think we need to hold off on this for a bit. Um, I understand there's reserve management plans around parts of the, the foreshore where camping is prohibited outright in the first place. I'd quite like to see that sort of work, and I'm, I apologise to staff, it is probably an area that we should have asked about 
Ella, when we we're having deliberations back in May, um, and also, um, yeah, it is 100 metres excessive. Not too sure. I, 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 yeah, I won't be voting for this today. Mm -hmm. So you, you prefer deferring of it until a, more of a direction from the central government? Oh, and I just want to see some, the, we, we talked about the reserve management plans around the lake where no camping's allowed anyway. Should we not be looking at that and just, if we're going to do it right, we need to just be a bit more thorough. Yeah. Okay. Councillor Cohen. Yeah, thank you, Your Worship. Um, yeah, I, I guess we're all quite torn on this uh, issue around um, just what um, Councillor Parker said and, and others have said about, you know, balancing the, the community expectation with 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 um, with the with the act, <laughs> which is a very uh, permissive act, um, but um, I suppose if I if I put my lens over this, which is from a a, a, a southern ward district councillor perspective, um, I, I know what the the mandate is from from my community, and, and it's to enforce exactly what we've talked about in here, around the the hundred red meter uh, buffer. Um, because it does uh, impact no matter what on, on the very people that live in this district um, and want to interact uh, with that Tonga, which is the lake. So I think uh, putting that into the, the pot along with everything that we have to consider, uh, I, I am in favour of moving forward um, to uh, side with our community in this, in this instance to actually send a signal that, you know, we, we, whilst we understand there is an act that I guess sets the parameters. Uh, we also have a, a, a district and a community to to balance their their views, and and so I'm I'm more in favour of, of supporting it as as is. Okay, Councillor Trollin. Are we going around the table? <laughs> um, yeah. So I'm probably opposite to my colleague here. Um, it's from the other end of the lake, <laughs> where we kind of see, you know really recognise the economic benefit that um, our visitors bring when they come to our area so um, and also we're all for protecting our environment and it's the environment that they all want to enjoy as do the rest of us so I'm quite keen to just put this off and do a little bit more I would like to see this a map that shows the areas where the scheme can't happen currently without the bylaw um, and I'd like to see that here and I am also interested to see what the central government are going to come back with um, so, yeah, okay. I'd like to keep some hold for that. Okay, any other comments? I, I'll just um, perhaps look at, oh sorry, Councillor Rankin, did you want to? I just want to say, I don't want to wait for the government paper. I think that's the wrong thing to do for our people. And I feel really frustrated that we can't pass the bylaw as we have written here. But I think that to get the extra information about the impact of reserves is important before I want to make that decision. But I certainly don't want to wait for a government paper. That's another summer with those camper vans lined down there. And our people rightfully are not going to be happy about that. Cool. We don't know who the government's going to be either, do we? No. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, all right. Um, right hand side of the table. Any comments? Um, I'm, I'm in support of Councillor Kangi on this one. I think our community has signalled to us very clearly what they want us to do and I think we need to stand up. For our community, I understand that we have some legal issues and um, we are constrained by the Freedom Camping Act, but we're here to represent our community and for that reason I think we need to act now. As um, Councillor Rankin said, I don't want to wait for central government either because be, it could be two summers. I'm not sure waiting for a plan about reserves is actually going to give us any more information that would be materially significant at this stage, so I think we should put a stake in the ground and make this by-law now. Yeah, through the Chair, I, you know, I tend to support uh, Councillor Trenner's view. I respect Councillor King uh, with the 100 metres and protection of the lake, because I'd, well, you know, no, no more, no, no one would be more conscious of that than I would be. Um, but having said that, you know, it's not a matter of the big stick you know, by anybody else, you know, threatening legislation. I think we need to be a little bit more, a little more consideration with regard to where we go with this bylaw. Otherwise, we're going to find ourselves litigated against anyway. And I think, I think with um, with regard to the hundred metres, yeah, 
I accept there's going to be a lot of areas where that's going to be appropriate or workable, and I understand, unfortunately, it would probably mean a lot more with the staff are thinking, you know, there's going to be a lot more logistics around management of that, trying to, to enforce that, the signage would probably help, but I'd like to see a bit more mapping, a bit more common sense regarding that around the lake. Okay. Um, can I say Harry? Um, I have mixed views, but I'm quite keen to move it on to, and I think we do need to make a decision and get on with it. If, is there a possibility that if we reword it to be the 50 metres, can we pass it in that way? Um, through Mr Chairman, um, I don't think the concerns that have been raised with us by the third party would be, I don't think they'd be satisfied if it was 50 metres or 100 metres. Can, can I clarify perhaps with Nigel or Jane, you say, so if we enacted this bylaw today, we will get Scotty when you in front of tomorrow, is that, is that fine collectible? Uh, um, we can't predetermine whether a third party will judicially review, yep. however, um, it is likely that infringements could be in doubt if we are judicially reviewed and that got upheld. Yeah. Okay, so we're passing by law, um, the particular party might uh, uh, judicially review, that puts the whole by law into jeopardy? Correct. Right. If, yeah, if, it, if, if it assists the councillors in their thinking about this, um, if there's a general, um, if there's some thoughts around the table that there'd be some further information gathered um, rather than just waiting for the central government lead, then the advice from officers is that um, there would still be an opportunity to do some extra work on this, um, some more consultation and to have um, a bylaw in place in time for the summer at the December council meeting. Okay. Thank you. Right, I can't really make a decision um, whether we defer this item um, for extra information, some mapping, reserve management, you know, reserve scenarios. Um, so, hands up who would want to defer this and bring it back to a special purpose, or, uh, you know, as Nigel's indicated there, we, we have still got some time. Um, um, he's cancelling, so. Just ask Nigel to clarify. So, would we still have time to go back out to the community for consultation and get perhaps the new bylaw? Like, if, if we take a bit of a builder space, we look at the plan, yes. um, and then we perhaps adopt this present bylaw to accommodate those things. So do we still have time to go for further consultation? So the, the process, the pre the process would be um, um, to leave this on the table, one month for officers to do some further work, yes. one month to go out and reconsult the community, yes. um, bylaw back to the next available council meeting, which is likely to be in December. So it would include um, reconsultation with the community. Do you think that process would help to? support the council from not having a judicial review? Uh, it would certainly address um, any reservations in the community about whether the council is needs to reconsult or not. So it would address that issue, certainly. Okay, thank you. Okay, so can to be clear, if I can, it, it, it that wouldn't necessarily address the issue that you're grappling with in terms no, of no, how far no, the act no, goes. No, it might soften the blow a bit. I don't know. I think what we're all trying to indicate here is we want to save council money. Yeah. 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 First, first yeah. invoice will be fifty grand. Yeah. 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 Yeah, Councillor King. Yeah, um, I was just going to uh, ask for something to be clarified. I suppose, you know, just reflecting on my earlier <coughs> comments, um, you know, uh, we have to be measured, in, I guess, in our response. So so I'd certainly be interested in, in seeing what that looked like. Um, but if it's, you know, if it's on the basis that it's going to remove the, the talk about a buffer, 
then, then I'm not keen right. uh, because mm. I think that's the very thing. I'm just yeah. saying I, I don't know how to yeah. get to that point. You know, mm. I mean, is that what we're talking about, or are we talking about something sort of else? So it might be these reserves. Mm. You know, take up a good proportion of this. Portion of it, yeah. Anyway, yeah. so yeah. I guess that's and then I guess that's my advice would be that you've got um, you actually don't know the scale of the problem at the moment yeah. outside of outside of Total Town, which is quite clear. Um, I don't have a good handle on it to be able to advise you around the rest of the lake with or without the buffer. We can you can can't can depending on the land tenure. Um, it may be that when we, if we were to do some work and, and map out the land holdings and the tenure and the ability to camp or not on those other pieces, it might be that the problem doesn't actually necessitate a bylaw in those places anyway, which might resolve the problem. So I think what I would ask for is, is potentially that month initially to be able to do that work, bring it back to you, and then we can make an informed decision, or you can make an informed decision based on that information. It might be at that point that you decide this bylaw is still needed in its current form, and in that case, you haven't lost anything other than, than four weeks, um, and you can add three and a half because it's the next council meeting, um, and you can then you can get at that point. Um, alternatively, you may look at the at the outcome of that and say, look, the, the actual effect in practice is going to be so limited, and given the risks around this bylaw, we want to amend it in this particular way and do the consultation, etc. That's required to to be able to make that seamless. Um, so I think you can have a, you can have all the information at that point. Can I ask? Can we be sure that we will have the information fairly quickly? Because I'm of the mind to move on so quickly. I can give you the undertaking that we bring back that mapping by the um, by before by before that next council meeting for you to, to make that call. Because I don't like the idea of making decisions based on other parties' influence as opposed to what our community wants. Yep. So this is, this would be more about about you making a decision based on on solid information, so that you know the, the scale of of where this bylaw is going to have effect or not, rather than, than anybody else having any influence. Yeah, through the chair, this is probably more my perspective as well. You know, regarding being a bit of common sense and trying to be, with, with this relevant, you know, I mean, you know, it may one fit it may not be one fit for for the whole area. You know, you know fifty to hundred meters. Like, oh, I'm for the buffer. Yeah, particularly you know, as I said before, being but um, I think maybe we just need a bit, a little bit more homework on it. Okay, all right. Three weeks. Be happy to defer <coughs> it. Three weeks. So uh, just to <coughs> so just leave it on the table. Just leave it on the table. Okay. Right, just move on to the next one. Yeah.